Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of CodeCop, the series where we go over advice presented as good advice and best practices on places like Twitter, LinkedIn or blog posts that actually is absolute terrible advice that shouldn't be followed, but unfortunately it is promoted because specifically in places like LinkedIn, as long as you get like a couple of comments and two likes, LinkedIn would promote this to everybody. Now today's piece of advice comes from LinkedIn and it is insane to me because it is coming from a very highly followed individual and it has been well liked and well promoted as yeah that's what you should be doing that is right advice and i find it very problematic because not only is it bad advice on a topic that is misunderstood anyway sql injection but it also doesn't present the real problem or the real sort of best solution so in this video we're gonna take a look in all that i'm gonna show you what the problem is how sql injection actually works and you're gonna be able to understand that as part of this video as well and what you should really be doing if you like that content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe for more training check out my courses on dometrain.com so let me show you the advice first and before i show you the advice i want to remind you this piece of advice got like a thousand likes on linkedin and many comments and many reshows shares like this was one of the most shared advices for C Sharp content and I find it insane. Now let's start with the actual code presented and then I'm going to go into the context that is also provided in text form. So preventing SQL injection attack. Do not do this over here where we go and get the newsletter based on its ID from the database so we can see that Dapper is being used here dynamic parameters, a query, and then the parameters are passed, we get a database connection and we return that. What you should be doing instead is you should be using a parameterized query over here with the at symbol, not string concatenation or interpolation, which is fair for Dapper, and also verbatim strings for some reason, and then pass the parameters and then that is good, there is no potential for a circle injection. Now the solution to the problem, even though technically if you shift it a bit is correct, doesn't really point out the actual problem. This is not problematic. I mean, technically it is, but this is not SQL injectable, what you have over here. And we're going to prove that as part of this video. Now, in terms of context, this is what we have. So how to prevent SQL injection attack in .NET applications. SQL injection is a cyber attack. And by the way, if you're not a security expert or you don't know what you're talking about, don't try to provide security advice. Like, come on. Anyway, proper input validation is crucial for prevention, which Technically, it kind of makes sense and, you know, it says you should use fluent validation. Okay, that's irrelevant for the validating inputs, but actually SQL injection is preventable even without parameter validation. So that point, even though it technically could make sense, shouldn't be sort of advice to help you prevent SQL injection. It's just the cherry on top. In our .NET API, we can avoid this by using parameterized queries or store procedures. Yeah, okay, technically both true. First code snippet is displaying the wrong approach because hackers can take advantage and do SQL injection how you don't show how and i'm gonna prove that you can't it doesn't actually matter the second snippet is displaying appropriate ways to deal with parameters fine sure one of the appropriate ways okay but i want to comment in some of those points and then i talk about security in my dotnet newsletter don't talk about security if you don't understand what you're talking about. You don't have to just say something because you want to create content. This type of content is dangerous. I don't mind people just talking about something that's harmless. But when you talk about security, at least you have to understand what you're talking about. Let me show you what I mean that this is problematic. If I go back to the example, as you can see, we're dealing with these pieces of code, which I have over here in my IDs. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero GRPC in .NET. In that course, Irina Skurtu will teach you everything you need to know from the very basics of what GRPC is and how it works into some pretty advanced features. And by the end of it, you'll be able to write clean and scalable GRPC applications. GRPC is one of the must-know technologies, especially for an internal service communication. And it's one of the three skills that every .NET developer should have if you're doing any sort of API development that is REST API, GRPC, and GraphQL. Irina has been using GRPC for years and teaching it around the world. She even has a book on web development in .NET, so you know you can trust her. She's really, really good, and I know her personally. Now, to celebrate the launch, the first 200 of you can use discount code GRPC20 at checkout to get 20% off your purchase. So use that link in the description, apply the discount, and the course is yours to keep. Now, back to the video. So I already created this example over here. What I have is a real database running in Docker, which we can see over here, I have the newsletter table running in Postgres. And if I click on this, I have two newsletters 
the hello world and the goodbye world, one by Nick Chapsis, one by Chapnixis. Now, if I go back to my code, you can see that I can get a newsletter by its ID and I can have a database connection exactly as that user had it. Basically, the connect method that they were using was an open async to a new database connection. So if I run this and I say, go ahead and get the first newsletter, I'm going to get it from the database. And if I say get two, I'm going to get two. And if I say get three, I'm going to get nothing because singular default. So you don't actually see anything. Cool. Nothing wrong with this. Now, a few things going on here. First, this ID parameter, which is, by the way, is in the example. If just to remind you over here, it is here. These dynamic parameters, they aren't actually used anywhere because you're string interpolating or sorry, concatenating that parameter. So these parameters over here can go bye bye. That's sort of irrelevant, but you should understand that it's not part of the example. So at least use an example of code that is decent. And as you can see, it still works without me having to provide that parameter. It doesn't make any difference. Now, another point to this example is that because this is an integer, as we can see in the example as well over here, you don't actually need single quotes. So I could go ahead and delete the single quotes and this would just work fine. In fact, I could turn this into string interpolation and this would still work fine. And in fact, I can go ahead and run it. And as you're going to see, I'm going to get the user back. From the sake of argument, I'm going to revert it and use it like this as it was before. And of course, the end is not needed, but I could use interpolation. And by the way, it would be technically bad to use interpolation. I'm not saying that doing it that way is the correct way. You should actually parameterize your queries. What I'm saying here is that because the argument we're accepting here is an integer, we can't really have a vulnerability with SQL injection. Again, I want to remind you, this is what the example is saying. Get an integer, pass it down as a string interpolation. And here we have it passed as a string that is converted. Both of the approaches will work. And just for the sake of argument, I will revert it just so you say I'm not cheating by changing the example. But there is no way that you can actually pass a parameter as an integer and get something out of this that would be explodable. I can change this to, I don't know, int.min value if I want to, the minimum minus like 2 billion, whatever, as an integer. And this will still work. I'm just not going to match anything. Any parameter passed here by the user, no matter the input, will always be an integer because that's the restriction on the method. That can be a problem. Here's where actual SQL injection comes into picture and can be problematic. The first thing would be if this method was accepting a string. So the ID as a string. If I did that and I said one, then we have an issue. And the real issue, of course, is if the user input, for example, one over here, is user controllable. If it is something we control, it's unlikely that this bad value would go in here. But for the sake of argument, let's just say that this one parameter is user controllable. Then as you're gonna see, I will still get the newsletter here in the console, but now this is SQL injectable. Now to make it more visual to understand why it's SQL injectable, I'm going to change this to return an I enumerable of newsletter. So I'm gonna return newsletters um, again, by ID, so I'm going to match one newsletter. I'm going to change this to a query async over here. And then I'm just going to say JSON serializer dot serialize all the newsletters. And if I just say run this, I'm still going to get that single newsletter matching that ID. All good until now. However, why is this SQL injectable? Well, it's SQL injectable because if the user from an API post request or query string parameter is controlling this ID, they can pass down anything they want. So what I can say, for example, if I wanted to attack this query is, OK, what if I say that where ID is one and then stop it by adding another single quote and then say or one equals one or I could do something else. I don't have to say one equals one, which will make everything match, by the way, and return me everything in the database. But I could also say or empty string by single quotes equals to individual single quote, which will be matched with this one over here, returning true, returning me everything in the database. And if I go ahead and I run this, if someone passed this as a post request or as a query, you're going to see that both things are now returned from the database. And if I had a third one over here, for example, three, I shouldn't talk about things I don't understand by author linked in. Then if I go ahead and commit that, you're going to see that we're going to get all three now because now I can get everything in the database by having a SQL injectable query. If this didn't have single quotes and I had something like this, this of course would still be injectable. I could go ahead and just delete that and change this to one and then or one equals one, this would also match anything. So one of the ways you can attack this is to get 
everything but once you have an injectable way into this you can do anything and a very dangerous thing that you can do is you can drop a table you can delete data for example i can go here and i can say from a user yes this is one or this is one stop the query here with a semicolon and then say delete from newsletter and if i go ahead and i run this what you might expect will happen first i'm gonna get the first newsletter over here and this will work absolutely fine and when i run it again you're gonna see nothing will match why nothing will match because i have nothing in the database because i just run if i go ahead and i refresh this a delete query across everything so that's why you can have sql injection and how you can actually have sql injection and what's the right approach to this? Well, the right approach is to parameterize it. So if I go ahead and just quickly recreate all the columns over here, there we go, both created, then I can go back and I can say, as the example shows, use a parameter in this case called ID. I don't need the dynamic parameters approach. You can have it if you're doing programmatic things, but in my case, I don't need it. All I can say here is pass the query and then a new object ID equals ID. And then this ID will match that id parameter over here and you don't need a verbatim string you don't need a, the triple quotes you don't need anything this will just work fine so even if someone tries to do something funny like this if i go ahead and i say run it it will be matched as a parameter and i'm going to get nothing as a response the operator does not support integer equals text the reason for that is because of how this will try to be matched if i remove this by the way and i pass it down then it will still not work and the reason for that is because well as you can see the arrow says integer is not text and I have an integer field in the column so i would need to change that to an integer now for argument's sake even if this was a string in fact i'm gonna go ahead and quickly change this integer i'm gonna say modify column and change it to a string which in our case uh, it is text by the way so let's go ahead and say that here we go then if i go ahead and i run this this will return the string correctly or the newsletter and if i return it back to the bad injected string and i go ahead and i run it then nothing will be matched of course because the string that will be matched is the whole thing which of course won't work as always if you want to grab the code and play around with it all of that will be in the description down below so now hopefully you understand what the actual problem is how it works and how it can be problematic and don't follow bad advice blindly but now i want to know from you do you ever have to deal with sql injection and was it ever a production issue leave a comment down below let me know well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding